This video will discuss the average kinetic energy of a single particle in an ideal gas using the kinetic theory of gases. So to start off, we're going to have a box. It's going to be in three Cartesian dimensions. The length in x will be a, the length in b will be, sorry, the length in y will be b, the length in z will be c. So this box is full with gas particles. The particles are non-interacting and the particles are going to undergo elastic collisions with the wall. So if we look at an individual particle and we look at its velocity just in the x direction, we have u1x for the velocity of particle one in the x direction. So let's look at its velocity and momentum before and after a collision. So its momentum before the collision is plus its mass times its velocity in the x direction, m times u1x. So it's going up there, it's going to hit this wall, bounce off, and then its, its momentum after the collision, p1x, will be minus m u1x, where now it has the same magnitude of the velocity, but it has an opposite sign. Okay, so what is the magnitude of the momentum change that occurred during this collision? So that is the magnitude of the final momentum minus the initial momentum, which is equal to mu1x minus negative mu1x, or a total of 2mu1x. We also know that the velocity of the particle is equal to its displacement divided by the time uh, between uh, successive events. So the change, in <clears throat> the change in time is going to be equal to the displacement during that time period divided by the speed, or that's going to be equal to uh, the time between collisions is going to be, uh, it's going to travel all the way down the length of A, hit that wall, come all the way back. So it's going to travel uh, 2A units of distance, and it's going to be traveling at U1x in our X dimension. So the time between successive collisions is going to equal 2a over u1x. The magnitude of the force that's going to be acting on the particle from this particular wall is going to be delta p divided by delta t, so the change in momentum divided by the change in time between these successive events. So that's equal to, we have delta p, the magnitude of that is 2m u1x divided by the time between successive collisions is 2a over u1x. So this u1x being in the denominator of a denominator goes up to the numerator. So we have m u1x squared divided by a. All right now if we want to compute the pressure that is acting on this particle due to its collisions with the wall here, we have the force divided by the area. So the force acting on it is equal to mu1x squared over a. The area over which this force is going to be acting is the entire area with which we can make a collision with this wall. So this wall is this entire pane of our box here, which has an area of b times c. So 1 over area is 1 over b times c. So the total result here is the mass times the velocity in the x direction squared over a times b times c. But we'll also note that a times b times c for a rectangular prism is also the total volume of the box. So this is our pressure that's acting on particle one due to these collisions that are occurring with the wall here. So if we sum this over all of the particles, the total pressure is equal to the sum over all particles of pi. Right, so that's equal to um, if they're all the same gas particle, they all have the same mass, m. They're all colliding in the same volume, v. So we have m over v outside the sum now. Sum from i equals 1 to n of uix squared, the velocity of particle i in the x direction squared, which is equal to the total pressure now is the number of particles times the mass divided by the volume. And this quantity here is what we call the expectation value of the velocity squared. So this is the average value of the velocity squared for a given particle. So if we if we sum up ux squared for each individual particle, or should I say uix squared, 
can't put the i in there, I'll put that afterwards. Uxi squared, summed over all particles, divided by the number of particles. That's the average square velocity of the particles in the x direction. So since there's a factor of 1 over n in there, we're going to bring a, an n in there to cancel that out. All right, so that is the pressure that is that is going to result from our uh, velocity in the x direction and our collisions with the walls. So now we have a way of getting what the velocity is going to be in the x direction based off of the volume, pressure, mass of the particle, and the number of particles in the container. All right, so we can now uh, try to get what are the velocities in the other directions. So there's no reason to believe that the x direction is special. Um, the expectation value of the square velocity in x is equal to the square velocity in y and the square velocity in z. There's no reason, there's no potential acting on the particles in either uh, dimension inside the box, so it's reasonable to expect that these, all of these expectation values are equal. Then the total velocity is equal to the square root of ux squared plus uy squared plus uz squared. So the total velocity squared is equal to ux squared plus ui squared plus uz squared. So as a result, our expectation value for the total velocity squared is equal to the sum of the expectation value for each of these individual component velocity squareds, or 3 times ux squared. So now we can substitute in u squared for ux squared, and we throw in a 1 over 3 to compensate for that extra factor there. So now we have the pressure of the gas equals 2 times the number of particles, divided by 3 times the volume, times 1 half times the mass, times the expectation value of u squared. Now we can uh, do another trick here. So since the particles are non-interacting, inside the box there's no potential energy so the entire energy of each particle is going to be due to kinetic energy so our expectation value of energy is just the expectation value of the kinetic energy so similar to this similarly to this formula here for velocity squared our average kinetic energy of each particle is 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 half 1 half times the mass of the particle times its total velocity squared. So this is equal to, we can factor out the mass uh, on there, and so we have mass over 2 times n, also factoring out the 1 half, sum over all particles of ui squared, or this is equal to, this, is, this sum here is equal to n times the expectation value of u squared, so that cancels with that n, we have m over 2 expectation value of u squared for our average energy there. So our average energy is going to be 3 over 2n times pressure times volume. So we could just uh, say this, this is our final result here, that the average energy of one of our particles is equal to 3 times pressure times volume over 2 times number of particles. But using the ideal gas law, <clears throat> which if the particles are non-interacting we do have an ideal gas, we can actually go one step further. So for the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, and this is also equal to nKT. The number of moles times the gas constant is equal to the number of gas particles times the Boltzmann constant. So substituting in for PV there, we can substitute in nKT, and, in, and then we get 3 over 2n times nkt, the n's cancel, and the result is that our average kinetic energy of our particles in a non-interacting gas inside, a, inside this box, which has elastic collisions with the walls, is equal to 3 halves times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. Now this is an interesting result because it's the exact same result we got for the translational energy of an ideal gas from statistical mechanics. So in statistical mechanics we derived it from the energy levels of the particle in a box model system and used the partition function to get that value. Here we just assumed that we had a particle undergoing elastic collisions with the wall while not interacting with other particles. And note that they both uh, end up at the same kind of result. 
So there's a pretty good merit to assuming that for ideal gases, we have these particles here, which are undergoing these collisions with the walls. So in the next video, we're going to take this idea about the average kinetic energy of our particles and go one step further to look at the average velocity of these gas particles.